Hello chaps and chapettes. Yes, chaps and chapettes. I have to include everybody now this because everybody everybody's making models. Yes, it's not just uh, it's not just an old man's game anymore. It's uh, it's for everybody and everybody's more than more than welcome. The more the merrier. The more the merrier because the more people that are building and buying models then the more the manufacturers will keep making them. Simple as that. The, you know if the demand is there they'll keep producing them. So anyway, let's get on to this one. Uh, not very impressed, as y you may have heard from my last uh, update. But uh, you know, we've I've been playing around with it. Okay, um, as you know, I wasn't happy with the way the uh, the tracks and the those bogies kind of went on. I, I had a kind of a lopsided thing, so it was a bit uh, a bit wobbly. Okay. And also then I, I was considering, you know, for the painting, it would, because they covered over quite a lot of the uh, the sides there, I'd never be able to get in there and paint them properly. So what I decided to do is I, I decided to kind of um, wiggle them off. And, and I say wiggle them off, that was a very, very loose term. Um, shall we say, I, I broke them off. Okay, easiest way to if I can put it. I, I I just pop them off, broke them off. Um, I can glue them back in place when when everything is um, painted up. To see, hopefully, you know, and literally just cover up any sort of. Uh, if I got to use, say, copious amounts of glue or whatever, super glue and whatever I need to use to get it to fit back together again in a reasonable sort of shape, I can cover it with mud. That is the great thing about armor. You can't always do that with aircraft or ships, but with uh, with armor, you definitely can. Okay, and especially one war, World War One armor, where they were kind of uh, sort of the war of mud. Okay, as everybody sort of uh, had always said that uh, it was basically a war fought in mud. Um, can the amount of shelling sort of tore up the ground so much and when it rained instead of sort of soaking away it sort of made mud that beautiful brown gunky stuff so anyway enough talking about mud let's talk about this so um, I'm after giving it its uh, base coat um, as usual I used uh, XF69 okay from Tamiya NATO black it's a good undercoat to give it uh, for two reasons one it'll show up any defects that you might have on it and it's also a nice sort of a uh, underlying shadow coat as well you know really for sort of areas you can't kind of get into um, it'll always kind of show up as a, as, a, as a shadow at least it's got some paint on it it's darker than what would normally be so that's the reason for an undercoat. I don't use a separate primer. I suppose I should, but I don't. I've never seen the need for one, and uh, this works just as well, just as easy, just as easy. And uh, I've had no problems in the past. Then, you know, there's always the future. The only time I ever actually do use a bit of a primer of some kind is on PE. Now, I don't actually have a primer, but I don't have PE in this kit. But I have noticed that where you use um, where you use PE and you use uh, an acrylic paint over, especially the Tami acrylics, th that you know, giving it a little rub like that can actually rub it off. Okay, so it, 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 I suppose a primer would be needed for areas that have PE. Now um, we'll carry on anyway with this. Like I said, there is no PE on it. Um, we were broken down into the uh, oops, and when I say broken, I mean broken because I just have to pop in another piece off. I can stick that back on again, can't I? Yes, I can. Shh, don't tell anybody that John's after breaking off another piece. Um, I'll stick it back on anyway. But uh, <laughs> I'm beginning to really hate this kit. I don't know why, but I really, really am. Um, I think once once something starts to go wrong in the kit, and it started go, to go wrong when I started putting on the tracks. Now I knew I was going to have problems with the tracks, um, even from the unboxing, the fact that how stiff they were, and uh, also the fact that one of them broke on me. Um, even in getting out of the thing, remember if you remember the unboxing, it kind of just popped in half one of the track sections, and. Um, 
if that hadn't happened I, I'd, I'd have kind of got over the thing because there's the one that hasn't broken and I did get it on um, granted I've had to literally super glue it the whole way around because it isn't great it isn't great the, the, the whole fit with, with, with this kit is is nasty um, like I said I I would not recommend definitely not recommend this kit for anybody if you want to get yourself an FT17 go off and buy the Ming one um, or the 116th Tacom one but don't don't buy this don't buy this um, if you come across it unless you actually sort of want to kind of torment yourself then you know work away if you want to give yourself a bit of a um, a project you know then go ahead and get it but uh, it is uh, well, with my advice just stay clear stay clear stay clear of it so the next thing for this now is to get the camouflage on okay I'm going for uh, three tones well actually be four to be I go for the, uh, the typical German camouflage believe it or not but looking for through the instructions they're the, they're the colors that are given they're giving uh, dark yellow um, red brown and green okay and uh, looking through then like I said I'm not going to follow the uh, painting guide that's with the uh, with the kit because it gives um, it, it doesn't give the, 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 the camouflage pattern that I want okay and the camouflage pattern I want is where you've got blocks of color and the, light, the, the black outline around each color so I'm going to use those three colors I'm going to use the uh, dark yellow um, the red brown which will be my natal brown natal green and the uh, and dark yellow they're the three colors I'm going to use so I'm going to give it a first overall of the lighter of the three which would be the uh, the dark yellow so I'll just paint the whole thing dark yellow and uh, we'll move on then from there we'll start blocking in the rest of the colors um, most of the work will be done by hairy stick okay but I will sort of block in colors using the um, using an airbrush low pressure you know, get get it sort of a reasonable enough area done and then kind of finish that off by hand otherwise like well that's small enough it's not going to be that big I'll probably yeah just I don't know haven't haven't got to there yet so we'll see how things go um, but uh, I do plan to use the old hairy stick anyway on it so um, We'll see. We'll see how things go. So anyway, that's, that's it. Quick, uh, quick update on the uh, on it. Um, I wanted to show you the fact that I have broken it, broken it apart, um, purely because for one, I didn't like the way it sat. So that had to be that had to be done. I had to fix that. That was just annoying me. And uh, also, then it was just easier to get in to the sides because the sides were, all, were were kind of really covered in. You couldn't get in there, and. Um, for painting you know had to be done had to be done simple as that so anyway lads uh thanks for taking your time out to watch this video don't forget to stay tuned to the channel for further updates and uh you know go back through some of the previous uh models and kits i've built and don't forget you can also join us on friday evenings here on the little thing we do a live show where we just have an old chat an old modeler's chat chatting away with a couple of the lads that uh kind of come along and stick questions and, and things in with the chat and uh, there's usually about 30 of us there which is which is a nice little number um, and uh, you're more than welcome to join us and uh, every Friday, Friday night from around 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock just an hour but what I'd say you're going to be doing on a Friday night especially during the lockdown you're not going to be going out to the pub that's for sure so anyway lads uh, I'll see you then if I don't see you then I'll see you beforehand and uh on future videos and all that kind of thing so join me anyway and the best way to do that is like I said subscribe to the channel and if you have already subscribed thank you very very much don't forget to hit the like hit the uh, bell okay hit the bell and by hitting the bell you'll be notified as soon as I upload another video and please of course give it the old thumbs up give it the old like uh, that will kind of uh, help me along with uh, with YouTube's the, with the YouTube's um, they like people getting likes and it kind of pushes them up the search engines and all that kind of algorithms and all that kind of uh, technical stuff that John knows absolutely fuck all about. So anyway, that's all I'll catch you soon. Take care.
be nice to one another stay safe out there especially with this uh, this pandemic going on and uh, get your hands on a kit I was going to say go out and buy yourself a kit but you can't go out so you got to try and get it somewhere or another uh, try and get it online or, or wherever but uh, go out and get yourself a kit build it and enjoy it because that's what it's all about and it's a good way to pass time during the lockdown so I'll see you soon take care